Hey everybody, Oko here, and welcome back to our playthrough of Final Fantasy XI. Well, we have another busy day of things that we do. I really want to do today, but uh, our inventory is just getting a little out of hand. I mean, we're, I've done my best here, but uh, I'm going to kind of be going through things and showing... I've been doing some shopping. We're going to be doing a lot of crafting, getting rid of a lot of um, the stuff in the Moogles holding on to. The safe here, it's at 79. I'm going to be going through all of this, but here's our current inventory, everything we have so far. Looking forward to clearing a lot of this out. Look at all that silent oil we got. I, I went to Windurst to pick up uh, Windurst and tea leaves. I got fishing tackle. Um, I also bought a whole bunch of oranges. Tons of oranges from the same taru taru that we buy the Windursty and uh, tea leaves from. So, uh, the reason I got the orange, remember, I want to work on the cook, on our, uh, crafting for cooking. So, you can, uh, see, we already maxed out cooking up to ten. Now remember, the first five levels we did was, um, carrot juice. We were making carrot juice or carrot broth with the carrots that we got here in Sandoria. Well, now I was using the, uh, orange, and, uh, how I did that was you take a water crystal and, uh, four oranges... And the oranges are pretty cheap, so I, I just bought like 16 bundles. I had tons, and I just did this all the way till our uh, cooking got to level 10. Yeah, this gives us orange juice. Yeah, there it is. So I just made a whole bunch of orange juice, and I just sold it. Uh, but I'm not going to do any more, because uh, we do have some oranges still in stock, but... Uh, we're at level 10. I, we've maxed out. So the next time we are in Windurst, we will go to the Cooking Guild. Because that's where that is. And we'll do the test, which I think might be the orange juice. I'm actually not even sure. I have to look into that. But the other place that is in Windurst is the cloth craft uh, clothing. And I think I've already started a little bit of the clothing. So cloth craft, yeah, we got up to five. And how did I do that? Um, well, I'll tell you. So I went to the Chocobo area, and I bought a whole bunch of uh, Chocobo feathers from that guy that's just outside the stables. All right, just looking at my notes, I want to make sure I'm telling you guys the truth about how I did this. So for this one, I used wind crystals. I used wind and... Where are we here? Yeah, uh, chocobo feathers. I know they're in here somewhere. Here we are. Chocobo feathers. I got a lot of them. And it's two of them. So two. That's all it costs. It's two chocobo feathers to a wind crystal. And I just did these over and over and over. And that's how I've gotten up to level five. So I'm just going to use the rest of these chocobo feathers to get them out of my inventory. And yep, that still raises us. And then I got enough uh, material to do the next step of cloth craft too. So I'll see you guys when I finish the the um, yeah chocobo feathers. Oh yeah, and it makes uh, chocobo fletchings, which are things that you can uh, use to make arrows. They're sort of for the yeah the ends of arrows to help them fly straight. Oh yeah, by the way, I found this. You go to history. And it just does the last uh, step. It uses the last kind of crystal and the last ingredients. You can just do that over and over. So that saves a lot of time. Still learning things. <laughs> yeah, and I just sell the chocobo fletchings, by the way. And they don't sell for much. Uh, you can hold up to a stack of 99 of them. And they only sell for one gill each, so basically a full stack is 99 gills. Not much, but we don't need them. I'm not making arrows, so... No thanks, they're just used to climb the steps. That's pretty good. We got up to level 7 uh, by just uh, synth uh, synthing chocobo feathers. So, the next step now is going to be... Whoops, no, nope, we want to do a new one now. Um, ugh. Well, we need more crystals. We need... Earth crystals. I'll bring over three bundles. One, two, three. How much are we holding here? Ooh, we're getting a little 
full on things here. Um, yeah, I'll put the water crystals back since I'm finished with the oranges. Okay, so now we're going uh, earth crystal. And this is going to be um, where we're going to use the... I buy, I, Bought a whole bunch of grass thread from the uh, from the guild in Windurst last time I was there. So, bought that at the same time I got my Windurstian tea leaves, oranges, and fishing tackle. Did a lot of yeah. I just didn't show all that because well, didn't really need to. So this is a new recipe. This is a very important one. We're gonna want to do as much of this as we can. This is gonna easily get us to ten. So I'm gonna have to I'm not gonna be able to do all of it. But this is a good base. This gives us a square of grass cloth. And grass is, yeah, the, like, the base. It's like the, uh, yeah, the first level fabric that we start with. So, let's just get going. Making as much grass cloth as we can. Until we hit level 10. By the way, you can see my plants in the background there that are growing. They're doing pretty good. Those were the ones that we planted. Well, wild grass seeds. Once they flower, I'm going to be giving them earth crystals. Anyway, I'll show that when the time comes. Alright, so there we go. Cloth craft skill reaches level 10. Alright, so we got lots of grass thread left over. So there we are. So the next time we are in Windurst, we'll take care of the cloth craft and the cooking uh, steps for the next uh, for the next step at the guilds. Alright, next. Um, let me look at my notes here. Okay, so next I think we're going to do um, uh, lumber. Lumbering. So, I'm going to be working on yeah, this U lumber. And I thought I had something else. Oh, I do. It's in my inventory. Let me just start on that. Oh, it's the maple. That's what it was. Maple sugar. Hmm. Okay, I better do the ma some of the maple first. Yeah, ba okay. Basically, I got to take all of my... Um, where did I put it? It was in here. So I'm going to... Um, yeah, turn all my logs into lumber as much as I can. Yeah, actually, those ones we use lightning crystals. Uh, I already have a couple lightning crystals out. I guess I'll take a few more. I might need to buy some more lightning crystals. How are we doing here? 77. That's getting pretty full. All right. Let's just get rid of some of this maple. Okay, so synthesis. We are going to be taking a lightning crystal and matching that with a maple log. Yeah, and this is what's going to give us... I already uh, I tested this out to make sure it would work. I had some of it here somewhere. Yeah, there's maple sugar. And it gives us a bundle of them. How much is it? Um, three. So, I think we just sell them too afterwards. Whoops. Now, that didn't increase our... Um, that didn't seem to increase our skill though at all. But anyway. We gotta use up this maple. So, I'll just uh, make this so we can sell it, I guess. Oh, there we are. It did go up a little bit. There's one skill. There's level 29. Amazing. Still on the maple. And this was all free maple we got, by the way, guys. Like, uh, this is all the maple that we got from our uh, hatchet farming in the Gelspa outpost. When we were looking for that uh, tree bark for the... Moogle quest. Yeah. But we do have some other uh, wood I would like to work on that'll probably get us to, well, it will get us to 30 and probably further. We have some yew lumber and chestnut lumber that I want to, those are sort of the next steps. 
I mean, but I mean, at, at this rate, we're pretty much going to be bypassing you, you, uh, lumber, you lumber, and just going straight to chestnut. But I'll definitely be using up the you lumber that I have because we can use that to make things like uh, wands. I think you wands. Yeah, see, we have a full stack of you lumber here, and then a full stack of you logs. Anyway. We'll worry about that when we get to it. We're almost done with the maple. In fact, I think we are done. Um, maple sugar. Yeah, the maple logs are gone. Okay, good. So now we're going to do a different recipe. We're going to go now wind and a U log and we're gonna do this stack of U log and that's what turns it into the U lumber. So we might get some skill inc increment increases from this. But it's the lumber we really need, the U lumber. All right, so our U logs are gone. Now we have U lumber, okay. So, where are we? We are woodworking. We're at 29, so we're almost there. So the next step, I might, I might want to actually do this at the guild. But yeah, this is um the next step is. It's still wind crystal, but now it's going to be that one of those U lumbers with a Yagudo feather. Now you can farm the Yagudo feathers very easily around Windurst, or um, I bought them here in Sandoria because um, it's a regional merchant and Sandoria just happens to uh, control the area that these are being, that these are coming from. So I, I managed to get them right here in Northern Sandoria around the fountain there at a very good deal. So these create an item, this creates a U1 which we can sell for a decent amount of money, I think, but uh, we can't stack them, which is the problem. A little tight on space. So what I think I'm gonna do is pack this up and go to the woodworking um, guild and do it there where we can sell them as we make them. And we're almost at the point where we want to um, go to the next level anyway. So that's what we're gonna do. So let me just uh, make some room here and I'll meet you guys at the guild. Two sixty one. The U one sell for two sixty one, or I can sell to the guild shop. For three ninety one. Yeah, so you make more money selling at the guilds, but we only have a limited amount of time. So let's see how many U ones we can make and sell them before they close. And hopefully we will make it to level 30. Well, we should make it to level 30 pretty soon. Oh, there's a plus one. Wow. Let me see when this place closes. It closes. It doesn't. He doesn't tell me. Darn it. Uh. There we go. We made it to 30. Okay. So, that's fine. So, we'll just stop there for now. The, um,. Guild is almost closed anyway. Let me just sell the the U ones I finished making. Yeah, they're almost 400 each, so it's pretty good. Quite a bit. And then, um, Causer East, I'm just going to sell the maple sugar that I have. I just to get it out of here. So it's 10 at 12, so it's not very much money. You're gonna get 120 gill for each stack. So, eh, not very much, but whatever. It was more just to bring up the skills, right? All 
Okay, so, um, the test. So we're gonna need some chestnut lumber in order to do that. So to make chestnut lumber, we're going to require another wind crystal and some ch a chestnut log, and I have some of those. They're expensive, but I got some just so we would have them. Where are they? Here we go. All right, so let's see how we do on this one. Yeah, so we're gonna need two of these. All right, so there's one. Synthesize, history, do a repeat. So now that we got that, now what we do is we're going to take an earth crystal. So this is the item we want to make. I'll put in those two chestnut lumbers we just made, and then it's going to be a coral whisker. That's the hard to find item. And I only have one, so hopefully we get this. If not, I'll have to buy another one, and they're, they're about 10000 to buy at the auction house. Well, let's just see. Hopefully we get this on our first try. This is the level 30 test item for woodworking. Oh, there we go, and it's a harp. So, let's go turn that in. To our friend down here. Hanging out down by this structure. You never know what, what is all this. It's just, I guess, it's just wood hanging out here, I guess, for their large building projects. So here's Shepardo. He is the guild master. Let's show him that we made a harp. Fairly nice work. I give you the title of novice. Work hard and never forget to be a good example to the younger students. And we're now recognized as a novice of the Carpenter's Guild. So, um, yeah, what I'm going to do is just finish now making those U wands. And then I'm also going to make as much ch uh, chestnut lumber as I can out of the remaining chestnut logs I have. So we're just going to do that and I'll see how high a level I can get uh, from just doing that in carpentry. And then we'll be moving on to leathercraft next, I think. Okay, so here we are at the Tanner's Guild. Um, I want to see if I can get some advanced synthesis support. Uh... All right, let's see how it goes here. I can see you are ready to move on. I want you to make me a Dalmo Mantle. If you p succeed, I will grant you a new title and teach you a new techniques. Right. So, that's the next step for our leather crafting, which is currently at... Uh, leather is at 28, so it's not going to take long to get past that. So, we finally get to use our ice crystals again. Thank gosh. My god, I hate these things. I've had so many ice crystals. And we're going to be using those Dalmo hides we've been uh, stocking up on. And that is going to go with a wool thread. And I have some wool thread bundles here that I got from the auction house. So that's it. Dalmo hide and wool thread with an ice crystal. Let's see how we do here. Pleasure to use up some of these ice crystals. Alright, so there it is. Dodomo Mantle. And we will trade Falpy that item to prove our worth. So there it is. Lovely work. You are now worthy of the title of novice. Continue to challenge yourself and define your skills. Here we are. Advanced synthesis support. Except. That's it. So now I'm going to just uh, continue to make as many of those Dalmo mantles as I can until the inventory runs out. And then I'm probably going to see if I can sell those here at the uh, guild. Make a little extra money.
All right, so let's see here. So a regular vendor would typically buy a Dalmo Mantle at 552. <coughs> the guild eight twenty eight, much higher. So let's sell them all. So that pretty much does it for our leather crafting for now. Um, that leaves the leather crafting uh, finishing off at 29. I thought we would at least get to 30. But that's okay. Uh, the next step, we're going to be moving into rams. So we're going to be looking for rams soon. And uh, yeah, farming rams for ram skins. But we'll worry about that later. Next, let's work on... Um, we have alchemy and smithing left. What should we do? Let's do... I think I have everything I need for smithing for now, so let's go, let's do the smithing first. So I've been creating, um, iron sheets by, um, making iron ingots from four of our iron ores. And then, uh, using another fire crystal to flatten that into an iron sheet. So it's been taking a long time to get all those, because the iron's been very expensive. We've been farming it as much as we can from the Zarun mines. But anyway, now what we're going to do is... Whoops. We are going to take uh, a wind crystal. And we are going to be turning one of those iron sheets for each wind crystal. We're going to be turning those into... One of the few times we're not using fire crystals here. We're using wind crystals to create... I think we've already made these before. But there it is. Iron scales. Yeah, so we'll just do that with all of the iron sheets that we've been able to put together, which is about four stacks of them. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four full... Just about four full stacks of iron sheets. So... There's level 34 in smithing. So I did um, some of those dolmal hides I converted to dolmal leather. I just did one bundle of them. Um, wow, yeah, I've, seen, I've actually should have even maybe just sold them like that. If people buy them, which they do, we should have just sold them like this. It's way better price, huh? Let's try and sell it for 90, I guess. Wow, do I have any more of those Domo hides, I wonder? Bid. Uh, materials. Leathercraft. Domo hides. No, none here right now. Yeah, I might sell more, make more Dalmo leather to sell because that's a pretty good deal. 90. Hmm. All right, well, that's basically most of the stuff I want to do. I'm going to head back to the Mog House and I think I'm just going to work on our alchemy and then we'll be ready to go. Um... All right, so the last thing we're going to do is our alchemy. Um, uh, yeah. So we've kind of moved past the um, silent oil. I mean, we have so much of that. It's crazy. I mean, look at this. Uh, I, think they're out, I think they're in here. Yeah, here we are. We're sitting on tons, and we can sell that all, too. Yikes. We'll work on that, um, but right now what we want to do is the prism powders. So those are a light crystal, which is going to be combined with two glass fibers and one Ariman lens. Yeah, so let's see how we do here. And I'm just going to do these until the materials run out. I think we'll run out of the Ariman lens first. And hopefully we can bring our alchemy up a little bit. 
There we are. We already did. Level 31. So yeah, I'll just do these. And then that's gonna be basically it. There we are. We got eight prism powders from that. It's amazing. So we're gonna have a lot of these. I'm probably gonna end up have, uh, selling some of this as well, but we'll just see how much we can get. This one's really neat, huh, with the light crystals. There we are. Good old prison powder. <laughs> we wouldn't be where we were today without that stuff, that's for sure. Almost as valuable as the silent oil. Almost, but not quite. <laughs> a lot of prison powder. Holy smokes. Where am I going to store it all, huh? My god. Um, we got quite a bit of room in here. I guess it's going in here. Well, I was trying to make room. We didn't end up making a lot of room, unfortunately, but um, oh well. That was a long time doing all that crafting, but that's just how it works. So let's take a look at how we've done. We're ending with this for now. Next time I'm in Winders, we'll take care of that cloth crafting and cooking. But uh, yeah, fishing's up, woodworking's up. We got smithing up a little bit. Uh, we didn't do goldsmithing. Uh, we did, of course, cloth cra crafting and cooking. Leather craft went up and alchemy went up. So yeah, a lot of things are looking good. Um, now, the last thing we need to do before we go out is we, we're in our Mog House. We want to go over to the Merit Points, and I'm going to switch over to the Mode Switch and start collecting our Limit Points because we've, uh, we, we've done well with the experience, but we want to start collecting Merit Points for this next adventure, and we want to be able to get up to five of them. So that's our goal. It's going to be five Merit Points, by hopefully by the end of this episode. So that the next time we're in Juno, we'll be able to see our um, our Moogle friend up in Rulud Gardens, okay? So, let's head out and uh, start on our next adventure. Before we head off, let's talk to good old Mistrix here. I don't think I have enough... Yeah, I don't have enough uh, tally, but... I did have a little present for my Moogle when I logged in the other day. I got a special key, so let's see what we got. Give me something good. Give me something I can sell for a lot of money. A Ganko. That, is, that doesn't sound very good. It is a Katana. Let's see if I can sell it. Yes, we can. It's a level 12 ninja katana. I don't need that. So, there's a little extra money. I'm just going to quickly check at the auction house before we leave. We sure have a lot to do, huh? Gosh, but we've gotten a lot done. I think we've done it the most efficient way possible, too. So, let's just see. I want to keep my eye out for more Dalmo hides, as usual. I'm trying to get a lot of those lately. Nothing right now. Okay, whoops. What happened? Yeah. And then ram skins we're also going to need. Let's see how much they normally go for. That's it? That can't be. Ram skins? 3,000? That's low. That can't be right. I'm gonna have to look into that. 
<laughs> I find that hard to believe. We'll just do a few last minute things here in Eastgate, everyone's favorite place to hang out, right? Uh, Roland Dien, I am just going to give you my copper vouchers, so I get them out of my inventory. So now he's holding 44 of them for us. Awesome. You, I'm gonna get Sanyet casts on myself freshly, so that's nice and new and fresh. There we are, a good, brand new smelling Sanyet. And I'm also going to... I can never remember which one of these guys I give the crystals to. Is it you? You do not need to donate any more crystals at your current rank. Speak to the guard, all right, so we have enough crystals. Or enough rank points, whatever. All right, so, oh, one more thing before we, <laughs> before we head out, we need to be as professional as possible. Right, we're, go we're out on official business now, so we got to put on our gallant cor uh, coronets to complete the full set. Enough fun and games, we've had fun with the carbuncle hat, but it's time to put the, put the games aside and start uh, yeah, taking it seriously. So let's talk to Andra Andrachian. Andrachian? So, coming of age. Princess Clyde's coming-of-age ceremony is drawing near. This ceremony is an important facet of Dorguil tradition. Monarlay's Holver has put out a call to high-ranking adventurers for their assistance in Chateau Dorguil. I will accept that mission. Ah, the young princess has finally become a lady. Oh, I'm sorry. You can get the details of your next mission from Sir Holver. All right. What's that? Dom Perignon Pat's Rural Consiling. What? What's going on over there? Alright, so we'll head over to the Chateau Dorguil, and I guess we could have warped there, as usual. I, I forgot. But I'll meet you guys there, inside the castle, or right at the entrance, but we're gonna talk to Halver. Dear Mother, my coming-of-age ceremony is drawing near. My brothers tell me that during the ceremony I will be informed of all the secrets of the Droguil family. I have heard that the same tradition was carried out in Tavnasia. Mother, what secrets were revealed to you? Will I be able to handle the burden as you did? I beg of you, Mother, watch over me in these trying times. Talk to Halver, see what he has to say about all this. Oh-ho, tis always a pleasure to see you, Oko. Come, there is something I must give you. This scroll contains an essence of my being. Those participating in the Trust Initiative can use it to call forth my alter ego. Why travel alone when you could have me at your side? Ha ha ha! All right, we got a cipher of Halver's alter ego, which I don't think we had Halver yet, did we? Yeah, no, we don't have Halver, so that's great. But that's actually not the conversation I was hoping to have here. Oko, I assume an adventurer of your stature has heard the rumors of Princess Clyde's, Clyde's coming of age ceremony. This ceremony is a piece of Dorguil tradition and requires much preparation. This is where your assistance is necessary. Travel to the Fountain of Kings, located within the Quicksand Caves, and bring back some drops of Amnio. The princess is always speaking of your deeds for the kingdom. Everyone here is counting on you, Oko. Alright, um, that's interesting. So that's actually the fountain that we've been to already. Remember when we were there? And I spent a lot of time, I spent about an hour there fishing, and I caught a lot of crayfish. A lot. Almost every single cast, I got a crayfish. 
But what I did not get was a rusty subliger, which I thought was actually, that's what I was looking for. I thought that that was going to be a bountiful place for those. I read that online somewhere, but that turned out to be not the case. Um, anyway, um, yeah, since we've been there before, I'm not going to show too much of the journey, but yeah, I'll show enough and I'll just meet you guys there. Yeah. What's it called again? The Fountain of Kings, yeah. That mysterious little pond where there was, like, drips. Electricity. There's wires hanging out of it and stuff. Anyway, you'll see. <laughs> Alright, so I decide to bring in Zaid for a little bit, just to try him out. We'll see how this goes. So... Let's head down this. I'm not going to worry about anything. If anything wants to aggro us, we'll fight them. They'll be sorry if they do. Um, so, where do we want to go? Well, we want to get to that fishing pond again, and that was by dropping in a hole that's down here. So we're going to go all the way to the end of this cavern and then take a left. At the very end. Yeah, we've been through this way before. Everything should just ignore us. Hunk. Nice and simple. Yep. Looking good. So, Zaid is a bl uh, dark knight. Well, so are we, sort of. We've never really done much with that, have we? We'll see. I might still expand on some of the other jobs eventually. Sort of have long-term plans for that. Now well, we'll get to that. We sort of found our niche. I think we kind of like have a good feel for the paladin. We're enjoying that. I am. Okay, let me see. So now we gotta go down here and we take the first left. Uh, it takes us, well, it's not on the map, but trust me. Yeah, we go down here and we take the first left and that takes us to, this, to the water. So that'll be right here. If we see anything along here now, we're gonna wanna fight it. Sabotender Bala Bal Balor. Looks like a cat trot to me with chubby legs. Thick thick thighs. For running, I guess. So let me see here. We get nothing from that. Okay. Well, I'm not really too worried about them so much as I just don't want them getting in my way once we start working on things. I'm just going to not worry about it. I don't think the battle's going to come this far out. These guys are another problem, though. I think we better get rid of these bugs. At least the ones by the water. There's a guy here again. Yeah, he's been here a lot. Last time we were here, that guy was in, over there fishing. This must be his spot. We're not here to... Well, we're probably going to disrupt his fishing for a little bit. <laughs> so, how's Zaid doing here? What, what's he doing here? Seems like he's doing very much. How about you? Antikin Princeps. We got a jar of Antican acid from that last battle. So, we'll get rid of this guy. I guess we'll get rid of uh, the other one, too. And then we should be fine, I think. 
Antikin Hastache. Hastache. I don't know what that said. All right. So anyway, now when we come here, we can inspect the pool. I thought. Yep. Fountain of the Kings. All right. And that spawns the, uh, this giant thing. Fight. So we'll see how we do here. This is our first time attempting this. Valor. Now there's two of them here. The other one looks a lot smaller. I'll take on the big one here. Now XML is not doing anything. There we go. <laughs> here it goes. Spinning away like a top. That was okay. We can. I think we'll be okay here. Giant squids. Uh, the first time I encountered uh, a creature like this was on Quiffam Island, and then you just got totaled. Well, I did. It was a bad move messing with it. I... All right, now let's do this one. This one's smaller. This is Honor. Valor and Honor. Why is Honor so much smaller, I wonder? Huh? Do we get any experience from that guy? Oh. Yeah, we did. No, we got little limit points. Yeah, we did. Good. All right, well, I guess we can do a, um, before it's too late, uh, here we are, Get the final blow in, the spirits within. Yeah, we aggroed this cactrot. Okay, so we killed the squids. That wasn't too bad. Let me just get this guy out of the way. Now if we inspect the water again, there we are, the drops of Amnio. Hmm. Besticle. Who did that? You gotta be kidding me, was it that the worm? I'm offended. Now you die. Alright, well, that's everything we need to do here. Come on, Halver. There you are. Ah, drops of amnio. These were used during the prince's ceremonies as well. Tradition prohibits us from allowing you to attend the ceremony, but feel free to view it. The princess would be delighted at your presence. Oh, that would be nice. Um, yeah, how are we going to be able to see that? I definitely don't want to miss that. This is from Shamond. I hereby conclude the coming of age ceremony of Clyde the First Dargoyle. Or is that Clyde I Dargoyle? <laughs> I guess it's probably an I, not a one. So the baby princess has finally become a lady. Did you know that it is a custom at the coming-of-age ceremony for the dark Darguil secrets to be revealed? 
I'm sure you have already heard that during the Great War, the Dorguil family betrayed my father, Altador, and dragged Tavnasia into ruin. Silence, infidel. Who are? Where did this vagrant come from? No, I do not expect you to know who I am. This is the first time I have been to this cathedral. Wait, you look familiar, but you couldn't be. But I am. My name is Rochefon. I, Tavnasia, son of Altador and sole surviving heir of the Tavnasian throne. My mother's brother? Rochefon, you were slain in the Great War. You doubt your own eyes? Pitiful Dorguil. That will be the downfall of you all. Know this, Dorguils. I will find Lightbringer. It is the destiny that drives me. After him! Stop, scoundrel! Wait! That Rochefon is a poison in our fair country. Dispatch the knights and have them comb the countryside. No, all of Anadil, for him! But how could it be? And what could he want? With the holy sword. And it's suddenly night again. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little cutscene. Um Alright, so I guess we're gonna be looking for Lightbringer, huh? Hmm. Alright, so there we are. Now we've learned to trust Halver, so if we ever want to call Halver into battle to help us, we can. And Halver is a melee fighter, paladin warrior. Just like me. He's just like us, so we'll definitely have to give him a try. Wow, another paladin. Just holy smokes. We got a lot. Now we got Cirilla, Valaneral, uh, and Tryon. Now we also have Hulver. Holy smokes. So, where are we going, huh? <laughs> um, I don't know. We gotta find where this Lightbringer is. Didn't get much of a clue there. Um, he just... Tryon actually said we'll search the whole world. All of Vanadil. Hmm. Could be tough to narrow it down, huh? Let's just see if the Tower Knights have anything to say. There it is, Lightbringer. The King has requested your audience. He has selected you from the Mountain of Adventurers in Sandoria. You should feel honored. I'll accept that mission. You have matured from a fledgling adventurer into a great asset to our kingdom. Do not let us down. All right, I'll try not to. We accept the mission. So, back we go. This time I'll take the shortcut. All right, here we are yet again, back at the chateau. And we are going to yet again talk to Halver as soon as he appears. There we are. Oko, I knew you were the one for the job, but don't rest on your laurels. Hmm, so we talk to the king. I guess we can bypass Halver. Call forth all members of the court. Has the adventurer Oko arrived? Ah, Oko, the deciphering of the stone tablet you found has been completed. There is one line that has us especially intrigued. Light will befall the great Vanadil only when the true heir of Darguil raises Lightbringer to the heavens. And this means? It means that only the true heir to the Darguil throne will be able to unsheath Lightbringer. And that only when he does will the true power of the sword be unleashed. 
Then it is decided. When we have possession of the legendary sword, Tryon and Puge will both attempt to unsheath it. Whoever succeeds will take my place on the throne as the true heir to the House of Doguin. The true heir? Tryon or Puge, the sword will decide the future of Sandoria and lead us from the darkness. Of course, we must first locate the treasure of the Dragon King. Rahal, Cirilla, I want your knights to concentrate their efforts on locating Lightbringer. Yes, your highness. Understood, your highness. And Oko, report to Rahal for your orders. I trust that your involvement in this investigation can only benefit Sandoria. Set forth and search the darkness for the light that will guide us to a brighter future. The dawn of a new era in Sandoria is upon us. Hmm, so Rahal. Um, he was over here. go. Hey, buddy. Oko, I want you to investigate the Temple of Ugalapi. Take this crystal dowser with you on your journey. Use it when searching the area. Any response from the crystal dowser may be a clue to the location of Lightbringer. The fate of the kingdom is riding on your shoulders. Don't let us down. Alright, we obtained the key item, crystal dowser. And... The location of where we're going to be heading. We're heading to the Temple of Ugalapi. Once again. So it looks like we're going to be hunting some more sunberries or something like that. Yep. So we're going back to the jungle. So I'm just going to take a little time to regroup here and just uh, organize my stuff and everything. And we'll head out right away. I think it was right... Was it the Utunga jungle? I think it was the Utunga jungle entrance. Yeah, let's do Halver, so that we can see what he's all about. We're looking for stabbers, choppers, and slash, and, uh, yeah, slashers. So, a stalker is not worth it. Sort of back in this area, um, right after you know, Den of Rancor, after we had sort of uh, done that paintbrush thing. <laughs> this is the only place I've been able to find uh, these tonberries. Hopefully, we can get to them. This is not one of them. Tonberry trailer. We're actually looking for, yeah, choppers, stabbers, and slashers. And I know there's some slashers around here. Anyway, we'll just get rid of these. It shouldn't take too long. Alright. Here we go. There's a slasher. That's one of the ones? Yep. No. Yes, that's that. That's it. We want that. Yep. Slashers. So let's th let's kill both of these. And hopefully we get a, pre a prelate key. I almost have a full TV bar here, so that'll help. Alright, so, dead. We do 
did not get a key from that one, by the way. We gotta get rid of this Tonberry Belor Bele Beleaguerer. <laughs> Great names. That's what we want, a slasher. Yeah. I see you up there. He's hanging out up here like Yoda. Looking down at us, casting magic. Yikes. <sighs> yeah, I brought this Oogala PP just because we did have that in our inventory, but I don't... It's not the one we want. We want a prelate key. Which I think we might have gotten before. Oh. Let's see. Hopefully we get one from this guy. If not, let's see if there's any other Hunberries around. We got a venom potion from him. Well, there's a bunch over here. Yeah, I guess that's where we're going to be heading. All right. So there should be some around here. There's a moose. We want this guy here, the slasher. Well, we got two here. It's okay, we can handle it. Alright, so here's the first slasher gone from this little group. We gotta get rid of this beleaguer. We got a Tonberry coat. Let's go after the slasher first. It's taking too long. Kill that moose. This is what we want anyway. So, here's another slasher. Give us a key. Sometimes they have very high evasion. There's the prelate key. We got it. Okay. Well, I'll just keep fighting these monsters then just to kill them. This moose and this beleaguerer. Yeah, but we got the item we needed. That's the key that we'll need uh, to proceed. There it is. Only Tonberry high priests are allowed to carry this key. new day. We're going to be uh, finishing things off with rank 8 today. Um, first, we'll check for deliveries. Yeah. Trying to move some things and make some money lately with the auction house. but It's been slow. But I think most of the things we have on there right now will sell eventually, but nothing for now. Okay. Including a bunch of... We put a bunch of Dalma leathers up there. And I, I just d don't have it in my heart to throw away these... Um, or sell these... Where are they? Oh, they're in my inventory. The um, revival roots. Yeah, here they are. A bunch here. 
Because these will sell, hopefully, for about 10,000 at the auction house, and they sell all the time. So I'm thinking I'm just going to have to start moving those. So I put one up. We'll see how long before it sells. All right? And then we're sitting on a bunch of money there. Even though they're small amounts, 10,000, compared to the Dalma leathers, which I'm hoping to sell for 80 to 90. Yikes. Anyway, what we want to do now is... Do I have any crystals right now? I don't. Yeah, I have the prelate key. So we're ready to move on with the mission at the Temple of Ugalapi. Uh, but I just want to wait. Uh, it's, it's very close to a survival guide. So we have nothing to worry about. We can go to that anytime we want. While we're here, I think I have some keys I can use with this guy. I think I have two of them. Oh, where are we at? Yeah, the three of them. Holy smokes. Yeah, I just get these randomly from logging in. So, let's see what he gives us. Ah, uh, serving of ice cap Rollenberry. Uh, special Gobi Key. Silk Cuffs. And the third one. Alright, so we receive... A Philidor Mantle. Alright. So I guess we should look at those items. <laughs> All right, so Ice Cap Rollenberry. This gives a 19% increase to magic points uh, and intelligence boost and wind boost. Silk Cuffs are for a level 53 Monk, White Mage, Blue Mage. Pretty much nothing that I'm... No, Paladin's not on there. Can't really use that. I'll probably sell that then. Philidor Mantle. This is for a level 99 Warrior Paladin. There we are. Finally something I can use at the highest level. This gives defense 18, enmity plus 5, damage taken minus 5%, reduces distance knocked back plus 2. That's a very that's probably one of the most useful items that we've gotten ever. Hmm. That's the sale status. I don't think yeah, so this is what we're currently trying to sell. We got tons of prison powder. I'm trying to get see if I can move those. I don't know. Dalma Leather are the highest ones here. They're all going for around 90, so I thought if I put some up at 80, they'd sell for sure. And as usual, the Silent Oils. Ugh. I need to, and then I, I'm putting a Revival Root stack in here to test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, we can't put anything else on there, but we can just look around. What I want to know is how much the stacks of uh, Chestnut Lumber are... Yeah, Chestnut Lumber or... Um, Holly Lumber. Sell for here, usually on stack. Mostly curious about this. Oh, that's so low. Look at that. 3,000. Wow. I'm actually going to keep the Holly Lumber. Because I can combine that with Luan Lumber. That's cheap, too. It's up here. I think you can just buy that at the Carpentry Guild. But if we combine those, we can make a bookshelf. Or, pardon me, a, no, pardon me, a book holder. With the, uh, yeah, Holly Lumber and Luan Lumber. It's one of the steps in the early 30s, so I might as well just do that. So, I guess we'll just keep the Lumber for now. Do I have anything I can clear out of here and sell? Do I really want this? Not really. How much does it sell for? 511? I'll just sell it. I don't want that cluttering up my inventory. And the silk cuffs. Never gonna need those. I have better things to put on my hands than that, so let's sell that for 4,000 to get some money out of it. Oh, another chestnut club down here. That can go. Yeah, see, revival roots unfortunately sell for very low. 52? There's so many of them, and they are useful for alchemy, but only at very high levels. So... I don't know, I was kind of sitting on them to use, but I don't think we're ever going to need to go into the high levels for alchemy. 
So that's why I just kind of want to start selling them at the auction house. So anyway. My inventory is full in my Mog House, that's why I have all these Revival Roots in my inventory and I'm just gonna... Every time something sells at the Auction House, I'll try and fill it with one of these. Anyway, I guess that's all for now. How much money do we have? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I'm just going to probably continue on with the quest now. Pretty... yeah. Oh, one other thing, um... I'm probably going to do some grinding for some merit points because I want to get those going. Just from all of my crafting, I've already gotten a merit point there and I've, I'm have i almost at a thousand. <laughs> so I've already got 10% of the next merit point. Yeah, it's amazing how... And that's just from the Records of Eminence by having that one on that, uh, you know, sub, uh, every 30 successful crafts you get uh, 500 experience. Anyway... I think I'll do a little grinding, actually, to get more merit points now. I think the best place to go is probably going to be back to uh, Cape Terrigan. I like grinding there. So this battle should uh, end with me getting three merit points. So we're doing good. So we're just going to keep on fighting Velociraptors and uh, Cockatrices, Sand Cockatrices around this area of Northern Cape Terrigan. Shouldn't take us much longer. And look how many merit points I have. We're up to 15 merit points. My god, I only needed 5 for the next level break. But that's okay, we can bank them. So it's not really a big deal. Those merit points... None of the, none of the grinding we're doing is a complete waste. I mean... It's fine. It's all experience or, you know, that we'd have to gain eventually. And finally, a Pururu as our white mage to keep us all healthy. Alright, I want to bring these Valanero in because he's my main guy. He, he keeps all the attention on him. Oh, I almost forgot too. we got to take this seriously. We're on official business now. Got to put our gallant coronet back on. <laughs> okay, so. Now, let me just have a little sip of my Pepsi. So we want to go right, we basically want to go back to this room, which was the room that is uh, being protected on the other side by a robot. I'll show you. We've been through that way before. It's one of those sort of robot guys. Hang on. Right. So I don't think anything's going to mess with us be able to just run past everything. It can be put to use. Alright, so here it is. So here's the door. It's locked. Guarded by this temple guardian. So let's just take the initiative and start the fight. This guy should be nothing for us now. Getting all our buffs from the Puru. So there's Protect. Now we got Shell. Now we're all clustered together here. Temple Guardian was his name. Hmm. Alright, he's gone. Um, we come into this room, there's a bunch of town berries in this room. We used to run through and go down that hall straight ahead. 
But now we're going to take one of the staircases up. Now we're ready to come up here to the second floor. There's a staircase on both sides, as you can see. They both go the same place. Uh, now this is the granite door. I think that's locked. Let's see. The door is locked. You might, yeah. So we got our pre-late key. This is what we needed it for. Trade. Pre-late key. There we are. Um. Yikes. I'm not sure what that was. Okay, I better look at a map here because I don't know where I'm going. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's just get... <laughs> Yikes! Tonberry Dismayer and a stabber in the back there. Oh my gosh. Alright, let's just focus here. Yeah, let's just stop for a bit and just take out the monsters around us and then figure out what's going on. We're in new territory here of the temple I've never been to, so... Yikes. Okay, this guy's almost dead. Let's take out the stabber now. Is there anything behind us? Yeah, there was something. There was another guy. A pursuer. Isn't that appropriate to me? There's even another one there in the back. Watching from the distance. Seem to be able to handle it though. What was that we just got? We just won something. A manji shuriken. Oh, that sounds like a ninja tool. And I'll probably be selling that. Alright, we almost have a full CP bar. I guess I can use it. Earth then. Alright, now Maledictor. Here's the room. We're basically trying to get to the bottom here. I want to get to these rooms. So, I want to be heading south. So, how are we doing here? These guys take time, but we can do it. Okay, good. Now, south. Doesn't look like those urns are bothering us. So, is that the right way? Yes! Okay, so we come down here. And there's a whole bunch of these little rooms. What's that? Let's kill these. Let's kill anything down this hallway. I think we just want to clear this area. So, here we have a Tonberry Pursuer. One is something. Tomberry something starts with a D. Now oh, we gotta do the elemental here. I thought the elemental died when the Tonberry died. It's a pretty neat looking elemental, actually. I've never seen one quite like that before. Is that a light elemental? Okay, here we go. So, Tomberry Dismayer. So he's basically dead. So there's uh, these four little rooms down here. You can see there's doors, little little areas. Um. So let's check these out. So, yeah. Granite door. All right. There's a monster in here. Let's fight it. This is a hover tank. You know, I, I guess we didn't have to fight him. He wasn't really, didn't seem to be bothered by us being there, but 
If we find other ones in the other rooms, I'll probably just ignore them. But let's just take one out, see what kind of drop we can get from it, what kind of experience it gives. We can do an ability. Let's do a Vorpal Blade. Alright, so in each of these little rooms, you're going to want to find... Well, we want to find... Yes, there it is, right in the very center. So it's another one of those question mark things this game is famous for. The crystal dowser slightly quivers, but there is no sign of Lightbringer here. Hmm. Okay, let's try another room then. I thought there'd be some sort of item that we could take, but no such luck. Oh, a maledictor. Holding an interesting little scepter there. Looks kind of like a prince symbol. <laughs> Everybody out there knows who Prince is. Alright, dead. What else do we have down here? There's another Tonberry down here. I should probably kill him. Stabber. Alright, we're sort of in between the, the two on the far west. Come on, team, let's go. Pretty strong team here, huh? We've got three paladins. Uh, four, actually. It's four paladins and a white mage. A very strong white mage. Alright, so let's go in this room. Can I open this door? Why not? Why can't I open this door? Let's try this door. So, got another robot in here. All right, there's a question mark on the shelf. Obtain the key item. Piece of a broken key. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, see, we got an item from this room. I thought we were going to get an item from that other that first room we went into as well. Hmm. Maybe I'll try it again. This one, I thought this one would open too. No, that one's locked. All right, let's try this one. Anything on the shelf? There it is, question mark, over here. Obtain the key item, piece of a broken key. Mm hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to go to that first room again and check. We must have missed a piece of key. I think we're supposed to get three pieces of the key to get that one room open. Oh my gosh, the door. Oh wow, that sucks. <laughs> wow, we're fighting through a door. I see, I can't select the door to open it unless I disengage. Anyway, we seem to be inflicting damage, so that was weird. Alright. Granite door. Well, anyway, I'm missing a key, uh, an item. Darn it.
Hmm. Interesting, huh, guys? Something glitched. We got the key in this room. That's the locked door. We got the key in here. It's that first room. For some reason, they're not giving us a key. I'm not sure why. Okay, forget. We gotta fight this guy. Yeah, it's strange. It very clearly on the wiki says that this room has two items, but it doesn't. <laughs> I've been through this room so many times. It only has the one on the floor here. Hmm. None of the shelves do like the other rooms. Oh, they do! Hmm, so here it is. This must be it. <laughs> well, I, I thought I'd tried that earlier. Hmm, very strange. All right, well, now we got the three components of the key. We should be, ob should be able to open up this one now. Yeah, and then these guys appear. So let's fight these guys. So these are the bosses, though. Neo whom? They're both robots. Giant robots. Um, I don't... I haven't really read any strategies on this or not. I don't know if we're supposed to do one before the other, but... Anyway, let's see how we do here. Um, here, let's have a yellow curry bun. Alright, so let's see how we do here. So, we randomly went after Neo Whom first. What's the other one called? Neo A. Neo A and Neo Who. Hmm. So we'll stay nice and healthy, and then we'll use another Spirits Within, get lots of damage. So I guess the other one's hitting on me. That's why I'm using the points. Oh well. I'm just not going to worry about that right now. The Puru will take care of me. Neo Hoom is almost dead here. I'm going to concentrate on one and then do the other. Alright, here we are. Abilities. Let's do a Vorpal Blade. Alright, dead. So. Here we go, guys. We're only halfway done. Oh, I think we just uh, aggroed a tonberry from somewhere. I can hear it. Alright. Yeah, I've got a Puru back there. Job well. All right, so hit points are about a quarter down. seems to be even tougher. But we're even tougher, it looks like. We seem to be doing really, really well, actually. Yeah. I don't suppose we got any kind of cool drop from... Boom. No, no drop at all. All right, here we are. Abilities. Whoops. Let's do a spirits within. We got fourteen hundred good points. Good stab in the side. All right, yeah. And then this guy is behind us. 
Oh, we got a merit point from that. Very good. We got a lot of those now. Yeah, we're going to be using some of those very soon. We got 16. Holy smokes. Yeah, we're going to go see uh, the Moogle at Juno at the end of this episode. Just to get ourselves ready for level 85 on. All right. He's gone. Thank you, Mr. Tonberry. Now. Now we can open this door. You could not find Lightbringer here. Your investigation is over. Mm. Can I go back in? No. That's it. Yep, so that basically finishes the quest. So, I guess we'll just head back to Sandoria and report what we have found. All right, let's talk to some of the people around here. See what they have to say. Cirilla. Ah, Oko, trade me the sword. Yes, you know about that. Still got to do that sword thing for her. All right, so we'll come through this door and talk to our friend Rahal and uh, and this guy here. How about Ar Aramaviant? The defeat of the Shadow Lord should improve the situation in the Northland and improve our odds in the war with the Orcs. Okay. So you were unable to locate Lightbringer. Well, to our surprise, Cirilla's expeditionary forces returned yesterday with the sword. What? Battle took its toll on us knights. I am relieved there won't be another mo any more expeditions in the near future. But don't tell Sir Rahal I said that. Hmm. Welcome back from your long journey, Oko. I am pleased to report that Cirilla's forces located the Holy Sword, Lightbringer. According to the writings on our ancient tomes, the scholars feel that the retrieved sword is truly the lost treasure of the Dragon King. The path leading to this day has been long and treacherous. However, our journey is nearly complete. I do not have the words to express my gratitude for your services. I thank you and wish that you might continue your work for the good of Sandoria long after. I have stepped down from the throne. However, one final ceremony must be held. The true heir to the House of Dorguil must be decided. At that time, your services will again be called upon. All right, we got rank nine. The last rank. Cool, and we also got 80,000 gil. Cool. Wow, look at all that money we got right now. We might have more coming in soon. All right. So, let's see. Now we can maybe get some different information. Um, now I think maybe we can talk to Tryon. See what the prince has to say.
All right, here we go. Thanks to your perseverance and commitment to the kingdom, Lightbringer has been found and now the rites of succession can be carried out. As long as the treasure is in Sandoria, the kingdom will be safe, regardless of whether myself or my brother is the true heir to the throne. The rites of succession will be carried out soon. At that time, your services will once again be called upon. Now we'll talk to Prince Puge, who I believe might be at the cathedral. No, maybe not. He might be right here. Let's just look here. Yeah, it's the south one. It's a good thing I didn't go all the way to the cathedral. He just hangs out there. That's where he does his scheming. <laughs> oh, we've never gone into his room. Prince Puge. I never imagined myself becoming king. The kingdom needs the leadership of my brother to bring her together. But she also needs someone to step in and take control when my brother has gone too far. If, by chance, Lightbringer selects me, I do not know if I can prevent Sandoria's bloody history from repeating itself. Does the treasure of the Dragon King truly wield the power to rule a kingdom? Are we not reading too much into legend? Only time will bring an answer to my fears. All right, so now some of those guys, I think, will say different things. What was in this room? I can't even remember what was in this room. Oh, nothing. That's a... That's a non-door. All right, let's talk to the Temple Knights again. Rahal. To tell you the truth, I had my doubts about the treasure of the Dragon King, but Cirilla managed to find it. Still, I am vexed by this. Why has the sword... Why was the sword on that island? What island? Oh, did they say what island it was? Quiffum Island? Okay. Milshapon. Lady Cirilla and the Temple Knights have found Lightbringer. Who would have thought this? That it would have been found in such a place. Arama... Aramaviant. There's not a knight in Sandoria that doesn't wish to take Lightbringer in his hands. However, there is still many mysteries that surround it. Mm-hmm. I want to head to Juno just to talk to the Moogle so that we can start the next five levels. And, yeah, we have more than enough merit points. So, I'll make some decisions and we'll get on with it. Finish, finish this episode. <laughs> All right, so here we are in Juno, Rulud Gardens, to finish off the episode. There's one more important thing we have to do. Let's head into the back gardens, talk to our Moogle friend, and take care of business so that we can put a good dent into the next five levels. So we can start working on level 85 on. Oh, there's someone else here. Oh, it's all kinds of people here doing stuff. Nomad Moogle, let's talk to him. Been working hard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know what he wants. Basically, exceeding your limits. What will you ask about? Wait, what? What will you ask about? Exceeding our limits. Yeah, we already know all about this. I'm not even reading this. Yes. <laughs> All right, so, very well. To power the process this time, we'll be needing ten kindred crests. And you'll need to prime your own physical energies by storing up five merit points. No exceptions. I've got a bad feeling about this. Well, if you ever need a refresher, you know where I'll be. Okay, well, we got like 16 merit points or something like that, so more than enough. And we had, we had 35 kindred crests. So I took out 10 of them from my Mog House. Let's hand them over.
Well, it looks like you're all ready. And if you're ready, why, I'm more than ready. Ahem. <clears throat> Yoo-hoo! Koopo! What's this? Has our guest of honor stood us up? For shame, Koopo. Ah, well, we still have plenty of firepower at our disposal here. Let's get the ritual rolling. Oh. How I've waited for this day. Ha-ha! <laughs> yeah! Magi and Moogle, Perike, Poronke. Ten years, ten long years I walked through fire and ice, subjected my body and mind to the harshest of training. All for the day, the glorious day, when I could settle the score with you, Matt. Prepare yourself! What? M me Oh, do forgive me, Mr. Degenhard. I neglected to notify you that Oko here would be your opponent today. Matt, I face my battles with honor. The battle garb I wear is proof enough of that. I thought you a worthy opponent, and yet you summon me all the way to Juno on some cruel jest? In all my long years, I have never suffered such dishonor. For this, you will get no mercy from me! No mercy! Wait a minute, old friend. What is this talk of settling scores? Why, I never. Ha! Do not play the fool, Matt. It was written plain as day in your letter of challenge. If you think yourself worthy of wearing a black belt, you must defeat me in single combat. Whoever could have penned such a preposterous missive? Oh, that's right. It was me, Koopo. You break your promise. Now I break you. Like you break your promise. Hiya! Well, wait! Degenhard! This. this is madness! Oh, good gracious me, Oko. He's preparing to come at Matt with every technique both in and out of the book. Kupo! If Matt doesn't unleash his own ultimate moves, he's as good as done for. We must help him, Oko. I don't know how long I can hold them. Hurry back soon, Kupo. What? Okay. Alright, this is some weird minigame that seems to be completely random. Well, this guy's wearing the Kate Sith hat. <laughs> that I bought. This guy here. I never thought I would see someone else wearing that thing. She probably got it upgraded, though, to actually do something. Alright, let's see if this works here. This seems to be a random mi minigame thing. Basically, you have to, like, wager on them. So it's 50-50. Look closely at the two masters, Kupo. See how they each emit an aura? That's a sign that a no-holds-barred shadow between techniques of inconceivable power is on the way. There are three types of auras, indicating three of the most advanced, awe-inspiring Bushin techniques. But here's the key, Kupo. Though they are equal in power, each technique is ascendant over another. The raging beast devours the silent wind, but is quelled by the soaring dragon, Kupo. The silent wind swallows up the soaring dragon, but is quelled by the raging beast, Kupo. The soaring dragon devours the raging beast, but is swallowed up by the silent wind, Kupo. We are dealing with no martial arts master here, Kupo. An attack from an equal or inferior position will be as easily deflected by the will be easily deflected by the opponent only by assuming a position of advantage will the attacker be able to break his opponent's defenses now are you ready kupo yep i'm ready hiya are you too done yapping then prepare to die coward ha ya Alright, so... Assess the situation. Matt has barely broken a sweat. Dagengard has barely broken a sweat. Alright, well, it's just random. So let's just try Raging Beast. Matt unleashes the Raging Beast. And he did the Silent Wind, so I'm not sure which, who won what. How about this? 
All right, should we do it again? I think we got that round. I'm gonna do it again, Raging Beast. We both did the same thing, I think. Grr, take that, perk. All right, let's try Soaring Dragon. Is this it? Is this it? Ow, wow, 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 wow! All right, and now the middle one, Silent Wind. And we can say we've done them all. All the moves. So these were definitely different colors, so one of us is gonna win here. I think we lost. Darn it. So that was not good. Let's try it again, though. Ow, wow, 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 says Matt. So green, can you withstand this? Ah, this battle's just begun. Let's go back to Raging Beast. Ah, we did the same. I'm doing it again. Okay, they're different. Uh-oh. There's no holding back this time. Oh, good. That was one for us. Ha! Yeah! Yeah! I'm gonna go again, Raging Beast. See if he's dumb enough to fall for it again. Ah, it's the same. Ah, darn it. Which one beats Raging Beast, I wonder? I'm gonna do it again. He's gotta just randomly do something different. There we go. And this one I think we win. Say your prayers. Azure and Fist. Ow, 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 What's the big deal? Sticking with Rage and Beast. Up oh, green. Yeah, I think he's got us on this one. Here, no match for me. Uh, you've learned a trick or two. As long as you give yourself over to Petty Rage, you'll never defeat me. Oh, darn it. He got us again. Guess I better start mixing it up here. Yeah, he got us. Oh, no, we got him. Here we are. That was a bear killer. You haven't changed a bit, friend. All passion, no discipline. Now settle down and listen for once. Your opponent today isn't me, but this adventurer here. Preposterous. This rank amateur? This amateur seeks to take his powers to a new level. And for that, he and our purple-winged friend here have need of your strength. R ridiculous. So the challenge letter and the black belt, it was all some Moogle farce? Hehe, <laughs> Koopo. It would seem that this nomad fellow is shrewder than he lets on. Kupo. <clears throat> Sorry to keep you waiting, Oko. Now that all of our participants are properly warmed up, what say we get things started? Kupo. Now, this is the moment, Taru, I've been waiting for. Everyone, to your positions. Kupo.
flattering. Hmm. Oh dear. Has my Moogle magic failed me? Koopa. I... Oh, he's what indomitable, indefatigable spirit, Kupo. Hmm. Oko feels a vast wellspring of life energy gush forth from deep within. Incredible. These adventurers can endure even more punishment than we predicted. The Mughalhood will be positively ecstatic to hear of this. Kupo. Hmm. <laughs> I prefer training the old-fashioned way. Simply Wimply Stupendous! I must report to Rue my findings at once. Oko, that was close. Too close. Kupo, my Moogle magic may have finally reached its limits. I can make no promises that next time will go as smoothly. But that is a worry for another day. Now go forth. A veritable universe of unbounded possibilities awaits you. Kupo. All right, and there we go. Yep, now we can uh, level up to level uh, 90. Wow. And we got some records of eminence for that as well. Yep. Hey guys, Oko here. The Vanna Deal 19th anniversary special. I don't, I'm not quite sure what exactly it was, but there was like, I found a gift in my inbox here when I logged in the other day, and it was this, this eChad ring. And, like, what an amazing bonus. 150% bonus for up to 30,000. I hit the 30,000 way before I hit the 720 minute, and I just spent my time the last couple hours at Ca uh, uh, Cape Terrigan fighting Velociraptors and Sand Cockatrices. And yeah, look at that. We got our levels all the way up to 90 already. Just like that, under like two hours. Amazing. Holy smokes, I couldn't believe it. And you can keep using this over and over. You can only use it uh, every two hours. It looks like I can use it again now. I, or no. No, in 50 seconds I can. Yeah, I see after an hour or so I'm going to be able to use this again, I guess. I don't know. It's an amazing gift. This chat array. Wow. Anyway, thank you very much to Square Enix for sending that to me. What that means is that I probably have a little time to squeeze another level cap story at the end of this episode. So let's see what happens when we talk to the Nomad Moogle now at level 90. So, exceeding your limits. Drat, Drat, and Darnation, Kupo. Seems our friend's been held up. <laughs> Oko, I applaud your ardent ambition, but I fear our preparations have been prolonged. We await the arrival of a very important visitor from a certain super-secret syndicate, you see. Howdy wowdy ho, I hear some scruffy moogle was just begging wegging for me to come by. We need to make this quick. A bevy of busty beauties just checked in to Neptune's spire, and they're desperate in need of my services. Huh? Mm-hmm. Ahem. <coughs> I am the scruffy moogle who sent for you. They say you possess a secret Far Eastern technique that allows adventurers to, how shall we say it, relieve themselves of their corporeal confines. Kupo. Yeppers, that's me already, Roo. So where's my victim, I mean a trainee, for today? Why, this strapping adventurer right here. That's your cue, Oko. Yes. How do you do? Hmm, not bad. Not bad at all. You must work out to Rue. Very well. You're as good a subject as any for my chic, unique technique. But first, a matter of procedure. As there may be a few minor risks involved, I'll have to ask you to sign a simple contract to Rue. Do that, and I'll pump up your powers with a minimum of fussy wuss. A contract? It couldn't be. So, what's the good word, Oko? 
Are you ready to sign a contract with me and become a magical, g uh, mightier, more majestic adventurer? Sign me up. Now, that's the answer I was looking for. Very well, then. I'll just be needing a few things from you. A kindred's crest and a cadav backscale to start a roo. Ah, yes, and a healthy, wealthy dose of intestinal fortitude. Intestinal fortitude, Kupo. That's an awfully ambiguous order, my diminutive friend. One would think you'd have a bit more imagination in that swollen woolen head of yours. I speak, of course, of the Marinera points you always request a roo of these adventurers. Ah, mouth-watering morsels of select seafood and pasta boiled to perfection. <clears throat> Do you perhaps speak of merit points? Hmm, as I was saying, ten of those whatcha ma pointeroos, along with the item of which I just spoke. Round these up and our contract is as good as signed, and I won't even need to take your soul. <clears throat> I mean, we'll be ready to roll. And with that, I'm going back to the inn before the vixens vacate. Drop a link shell, line to my assistant Taru, when this fellow was ready, Mr. Moogleman. Far be it from me to keep you from your destiny, Oko. That this technique the ta the Taru Taru speaks of. Uh, but never your mind. Just an old man's worries. Trust your heart and follow your own path. It won't lead you astray. All right, so we already have the merit points and we have the kindred crest, but that Kadav box scale, that was a random item that uh, could have been many other things, but we got the Kadav box scale. So it looks like we're going to be going back to the Pearlboro Mines, I think, to get that item, unless I have one. I'll quickly check my Mog House right now, see if we have that item in storage, and but if not, then we'll just quickly pick up that item and we'll come back here and... Raise another level. This way. Oh, we got one! Look at that! Kadav backscale. Right on. That, well, I want to make sure that's the item. It is. Oh, that is awesome. We were holding on to that first. I Wow. Oh, I'm impressed. Wow, that saves us a lot of time. Woohoo. I'm just going to show this entire thing. Why not? <laughs> so we got really lucky there. I have no idea why I was hanging on to that. I guess I... I have no idea. I mean, I'm sure we used one of those earlier for another quest, didn't we? I sort of remember hunting for the backscale way back. All right. Well, that's good, because now we can just get to the fun and exciting stuff next, because the next episode is going to be the beginning of another amazing expansion. Talk a little bit more about that right after we talk to our Moogle here, our Moogle friend. All right, we're back already. We're speedy. All right, the kindred, Kindred's Crest. We got lots of Kindred Crest. We only need one, though. And um, ask about merit points. No, we don't need to do that. So, All right, so let's just trade the things. Trade. Uh, whoop, no, not that. We could have backscale and a kindred crest. Why, yes, this should be everything. Now, where did I put my link shell? Kupo! Curses and criminy. Late again. Does that Taru disregard for decorum? No, no bounds. Heh. <laughs> Speak of the devil. And don't look now, but he's brought a friend. 
Hmm. 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 And give me just a rue one good reason why your associates won't help sell my scrumptious pickled re-rab tails. I could give you a thousand wows and reasons, my dear. But what would be the point to rue? The higher-ups would never listen to a second-string flunky like me. And would it kill you to try to negotiate a rue? After all the time you've spent there, surely you know how to deal with those costive wastive Easterners. And what's in it for me, hmm? Why, I don't even like pickles! Yuck! Ah, the tragedy of it all. It's common knowledge that the pickle hater misses out on at least 80% aru of life's pleasures. Ah, but the remaining 20% tastes infinitely as sweet aru, untainted by the sour, unsavory flavor of those foul foodstuffs. I, for one, am developing an exceedingly unpleasant taste in my mouth just listening to the pointless palaver. Is this young lady your assistant, Kubo? Ah, uh, forgive me, this is Chumba Wumba, a purveyor of pickle wickles who, as you can see, is most desperataru to distribute her wares. That's Chamama! And I'll have you know that I run a perfectly reputable restaurant, Daru. But my assistant, yes, of course. Uh, how's this, Miss Chalapalooza? You lend me a hand, and I'll see if I can't talkie-walkie the boss into selling your rancid rations. That's Chamama! And rancid? But wait, you do that for me? Of course, my dear assistant. Now I'll step right around this way, won't you? Something about this is tying my sensitive stomach in knots, Kupo. Oko, listen well. My ancient eastern technique will trigger a miraculous process inside your body. You might feel a bit odd at first, but pay it no mind. Incubate it carefully, and then, when the urge calls, I want you to squeeze with all your might, Haru. Succeed, and you will expel the physical embodiment of the profound life energies that lie dormant, Haru, within you. Oh, gosh, this guy talks a lot. It's all in the timing. Ten beats of your heart, ten seconds, should do the trick. Discharge it too early, and it will disintegrate into dust -a -roo. Wait too long, and we'll have a foul mess as rotten wanton as Chumba Wumpa's pickled rodent tails. Hmm, discharge what? No need to sweat the details, friend. Any hoodles. As a final step, my lovely, wobbly assistant will weigh your uh, evacuated matter. I dare say three pickling stones weight would do just perfectly. Well, aren't you in luck? I have a supply of smooth stones right here. Perfect. Now remember, Oko, it's all in the mind. When you make that all-important push, and vision something cutesy wootsy, a chocobo egg, for example. Cutesy wootsy. I recommend you take a moment, Taru, to catch your breath, Oko. When you're ready, just speak to our frizzy furred friend here, okay? All right, so this is going to have some sort of side co little side game that's going to involve a timing. We're going to have to count to ten. Ready to give my technique a shot? Ready. Splendid. I shall signal the start of the procedure. Kupo. All right, Oko. On, your, on our Moogle friend's mark. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A curious mass is released from Oko's body. Well, well, this looks most promising indeed. 
Miss Picklemonger, the way in. That's cha. Oh, just let me see that already. I don't know if that was good or not. Did we lay an egg? One stone, two. Yes, it looks like we have. Oh, deary weary me. I'm afraid it's just a trifle wifle too light. Nope. This won't do at all. Once more from the beginning. <laughs> the unidentified mass vanishes. Ugh, I thought that was difficult to do, but it's even more difficult to watch. Just what was that strange stone, Kupo? Well, Oko, I'm ready ready when you are. Alright, so we... It was too light. Does that mean we were too fast or slow? I don't know. We'll just try this. I think we can just try this, though, as many times as we want. So, yeah, we just got to go to ten. One, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, this looks promising. Could it be? Yes, I think it could. Three stones, wait, and not an ounce more. He's done it. I think I'd live to see the day. To think I'd live to see the day. This sleek, oblong shape. This glossy sheen. It's simply wimply smitten. And just what is Oko supposed to do now? King Koopa fried, forbid. You can expect him to, uh, eat it? Oh, good heavens, no. This is where I unleash my final technique. Just like so. The unidentified mass transforms into a shimmering crystal. Congratulations, Oko. You have tapped into a power that few mortal mortals have. And he hands the soul gem to Oko. Keep this stone close at hand for the rest of your days. As for the nature of its powers, I'll just leave that to your imagination. Are we done here? I've got peaks of pickled rarub tails to sell, and I'm not getting any younger. Very well. Let it not be said that a Tori to Tori doesn't keep a promise. May we meet again, Oko. Tataru. Whatever is the matter, Matt? You're looking positively pale, Kupo. It's nothing. Nothing at all, I say. Uh, I think I've got... Uh, I think I've lost my appetite. Oko, only the terminal trial awaits you now. I suspect we shall meet again before long, Kupo. That strange Matt is the only uh, human that says Kupo. And we obtained uh, a key item, Soul Gem. I guess we can quickly take a quick look at that. That's going to be everything that we're doing in this episode, by the way. Oh, it's a temporary item. What started as an unknown mass expelled from your body by means of a cryptic Far Eastern ritual is now a brilliant shimmering gemstone. Life energy flows and pulsates from within. All right, well, I guess maybe we're going to do something with that. <laughs> So, that's everything for this episode. So, in the next episode, we're going to be heading to Delkfoot's Tower um, on Quiffam Island, and we are going to be starting the Chains of Promethea expansion. Yeah, we've worked really hard to get where we are now. Let's take a little look at our stats here. Thank you, everybody, for watching my video today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking the link below. I'm Oko, and I'll see you guys all on the next episode of our playthrough of Final Fantasy XI.
Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one. Bye for now.